This is the beginning of part five, and uh, in this video, we're going to install a top plate with some throttle linkage, put on the carburetor parts, the, and the header. So, to start with, um, this mounts up here like this. It comes with the nuts and bolts to put it on. But I want to get the throttle spring in here before I put it on. I think it'll be easier that way. So, first order of business is to use the existing throttle uh, rod from the old governor setup. And originally this spring was turned the other way. For some reason they say to turn it around and put it back on. Uh, I saw the instructions on this on another YouTube video. Um, ARC company, I guess it is. So anyway, there's this Z-bend right here. And there's a large hole and a small hole on the short end of this rod. So I'm going to put the Z-bend in here, and then the spring in the small hole. It's kind of tricky. Okay. So now this will rotate around. comes out underneath right here. So this is the way it's configured when the cable comes in from the throttle foot control. So now this spring, which was also part of the original governor setup, is installed under here as a return spring. So it, it goes in the same small hole as the other spring, the small hole. So I'll drop that in there, you can see it. Okay, and then there's a hole right here, that's for the other end of the spring. So let's see if I can get it in there. Okay, so, turn this around, and if you can see this, the throttle rod comes out under here like this, and, the, and then the cable has it under tension, so that returns the throttle. So, I'll show you how that works when I get the carburetor set up. So anyway, now that that's hooked on here, we can put this up on, on top of the motor, like so. So now you can see how the rod comes out to the carburetor, and then the cable would come in and attach to here, and how that's spring-loaded now. Okay, so I'm going to put this on. This one a little loose until I get the others where they go. I'm going to use a washer and a lock washer. Like so. Pretty close to being where I want them, so let me tighten this one up.
Okay. Top plate is on. So, you can see this throttle a little bit better. This would be closed, and that's when you have your foot on the gas pulls. Okay. So I have the carburetor components lined up here, and I think I've got them the right way. There's no real instructions. You just kind of have to mess with it and let common sense prevail. So, there's a gasket here uh, already, and then this is the uh, pulch fitting for the fuel pump. So it goes on. Then there's the gasket. Then the carburetor. Then this was an original part. It's got like a gasket impregnated into it, so I'm going to use it. I think I'm supposed to use it. Okay. And then this is the adapter for the k and filter. And then this little bracket right here, it holds the, uh, the choke on, choke lever on. So it's just loose right now until we get it on there. So so this goes on here like that, and then this captures... So it looks like it's going to work. And then this lever pushes down on top of the choke, just like so. You can see. So that keeps the lever from coming off. That's the idea. Not the slickest arrangement in the world, but it'll work. So then you put a couple of nuts on. If you stack everything up in the wrong way, then there's not enough room to put on the nut. And I think I got it right. We'll see. Okay, so now that the choke lever is where it belongs, and this is installed, I can tighten up the, the little nut here, little screw. I'll put some Loctite on this eventually, but for now, for demonstration purposes. So this rod goes in here, and then this little spring There's a little hole here that it goes in. You could probably get by without this spring. It doesn't appear to do much of anything. Okay, so... So if the cable's coming in, attached to this, when you push on the gas, it'll pull on this lever, thus actuating the throttle. So you step on the gas, it goes like that, the return spring brings it back. So that's idle, there's full throttle. This pulse fitting is awful close to that, but I think it's going to work where the tube comes out. Okay, so later we'll, I'll show you this setup once I install it in the cart. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so now, uh, let's put this back on. Now we're going to put on the, uh, the filter. So a pretty simple affair, it just goes on there, you can pretty much put it at any angle you want. I think I'm going to go right there to start with. And then you can decide where you want this. Tighten it up. Alright, that, that's done. That looks pretty good.
good. Looks like it'll flow some decent air. Okay, so the header. Uh, originally, it was, oh gosh, uh, quite a bit longer, maybe out to here. So, uh, based on the design of the monocar and how I wanted this to fit, I wanted to exit the rear of the car. So I, I cut a piece out of it, welded it, shaped it to a little stubby thing. So, but when I went to install it on here, originally, right here, the casting of the fins on the head here, I had to file a little bit right there and a little bit right here so it had clearance to go on. So here's the uh, original gasket. And then the header drops on like so. So number 12. somewhere up here and rewire it so that it's on top of the motor not underneath because the body covers this right here so I can't get to the switch and then the fuel pump you know uh, they sell me the fuel pump but you know it fits in two of the holes but there's no no holes here you know, right right here there's two so I have to drill some holes I might mount it in a different location based on where I put the tank. So this will come later. Alright, so I think it turned out pretty good. It took me a few days, but I got the modification done. And uh, I'll do some other videos when, uh, when I mount it on the car and I figure out how I'm going to do the gas tank. Alright, job done. <laughs> 